and welcome back to the Angry Teacher channel. I'm Richard Wolf, the Angry Teacher, and today we're going to talk about uh, four proactive steps to avoid misbehavior from the first day of school and from then on. I, if you've been here before, thanks for coming by. You know I love you to death. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because without you, this would not have happened. Those of you who are new, thanks for coming by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next dope Angry Teacher video, because, hey, we do everything about education, be a part of the community, um, drop some comments and participate and become a part of the family. All right, so with that said, let's get started. Now it's no surprise that um, last year was it? Oh my God, I don't know what happened with the crazies, but kids were just out of control. Kids' behaviors were off the chain. Uh, and when, you know, you would call the parents to tell them that their kid is acting the fool, the parents would start acting the fool. I'm like, what the heck? And then when you tell the, the um, admin about, you know, yeah, you contacted the parents, so now it's your job to do something, they would take the side of the parent and the kid. I'm like, are you kidding me? In any case, so I was reading this article and I thought, you know, my teacher friends need to hear this because at some point we all need to remember this. Every year, I get butterflies. You know, I was talking to a teacher friend and she said, one of my teacher besties, do you guys still get that? Drop, drop your response down below. I've been teaching, this is like year 20 or 21. And every year before school starts, that night before that Sunday, I'm a nervous wreck. I've been doing this spiel, I've been giving the spiel for 20 years, and why am I still nervous? I'm a student taught, so I already know what to do. I already expect to, you know, do this and then, you know, get comfortable. And but every big, every Sunday night, I'm restless, I'm jittery, I get there early, I'm nervous when the first kid walks in, I'm like, whoa, and so it begins. But just some steps that we can use to prevent misbehavior for the first week, first couple of days, and then if we keep doing them, it goes into the rest of the year. Right. I don't do one of them, one of the things that the article um, recommended, and this is it. It's, we need a seating chart. Now, I have a seating chart for my kids after we've established who is gonna stay, because at the school I'm at, they change schedules like frequently. Uh, you, you get a seating chart and you put Johnny here and then tomorrow Johnny they took him out and put him in another class or he's in another period or whatever so I don't go overboard and put them in a seating chart at the beginning of the year uh, I wait until things kind of level off and they level off my classes and they change it from 44 to 34 and they do what they need to do and then I actually have the seats you know right there in the beginning I don't have a seating chart I let them sit wherever they want to sit, so I can determine um, by just their observation. They're going to sit with their friends. I'm going to see the loner in the back. I'm going to see the one who's always attentive. She has all her books and highlighters in the front um, on her desk already. Uh, those who, um, sir, can I hand out the paperwork and all this other stuff? I'll see the different personalities. I'll get to see who are friends and who wants to chill and who doesn't want to do anything and who is upset that summer is over. And I'll see all these things without a seating chart. And then I determine, okay, Susie and Mary won't stop talking, so I'll separate them. Or Brad doesn't talk to LeBron anymore, so I'm moving LeBron. Or they're uncomfortable, or they're used to date, or they're a couple, so I move them later on. And then kids, especially seniors, they start sitting in the seat that they like, and so I know where they sit. I don't have to worry about a seating chart at that point. One thing the article did um, identify, there's this, it's a cool idea. I think I might try it one year, maybe this year, I don't know, I'll let you know. Um, Another option would be to tell them that they have to put themselves in alphabetical order. This way they begin to learn a few names as they figure out where they belong. That is a cool idea. I might try that. I might actually Number two, try that. Because... Learn their names fast. Now, <laughs> it's ironic that that would be one of the four things that gets to weed out misbehavior because I have a horrible memory and everybody knows that i've been known to call kids dude hey you girl you boy um dude in the back 
son, you know, Miss Thing, Madame, uh, Missy, just random titles because I can't remember your names. And then eventually I learn them. But once I do, that's it. It's a lifelong, um, it's up here. And with that said, the kids know it's coming from a place of I just don't remember your name. It's not personal. I'm not attacking you because your name has two syllables or it's, it's too ethnic or it's not ethnic enough or I just don't like your name. I don't like you. It's not that serious. I just can't remember. So with that said, that is a very good tip. It doesn't work for me. So I have to figure out new ways of learning their names. And the good thing is that because I've been in that building that I've been in for about, this is my 11th year or 12th year in that building. So there are a lot of juniors who know about me and so they would pass down. We hang out every now and then. So I know the, those names, but for the most part, the, the new ones that I get, eventually I learn their names, but initially I don't, I mean, you know what? And the article said, learn them fast. So it doesn't have to be the same day. So as long as by the end of the week, you kind of figure it out. And what I do, here's, here's a, another tip, an extra tip. To learn the names fast, in the beginning when I'm going over my spiel, when I'm going over my atten um, attendance, when I'm calling their names, I ask them to see who they are. And then when I'm going over the, the rules and the, the school policy and all these different things, I ask them who they are before they answer a question or before they ask a question. So I, I keep getting that associated with the question and I get the names that way. Also, Number three, get to know their essential selves, especially in light of last year's foolishness and the year before with the bigger foolishness and the, the SEL that we have to pay attention to even more so, even though teachers have been paying attention to socio-emotional um, learning and systems for years, we have to pay attention even more so now because kids are going through some stuff that, you know, we can't imagine. With that said, we all have different personalities, so that means we're going to address things differently. I will have a um, an, an activity, a back to school activity that will help me to understand who they are and how they work and who's the bossy one and who's the one that is easily followed or easily follows. Uh, so, but get to know who these kids are, and then once they know who you are, once they know that you know who they are, and once they know that you care, then they'll 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 calm down and lastly number four this is a must do since I've been taught this in school undergrad years billions of years ago I've been doing it and I have to admit guys it works stand at the door greet them at the door no matter what happened in previous classes, you say good morning at the door. And I do it twice. So after I clap you up at the door, and we do the hand stuff. And after I um, say hello, and some kids are huggers, so I hug them at the door. And we talk about the game last night, and we do all the stuff in the, fam the, the, the passing, and you're hanging out at my door, and then I usher you inside, and then, you know, Mr. Holmes, can I go get some water? Can I do this? And we do that and whatever. I turn around and when class the bell rings and we're about to start and I get in the classroom, I greet them as a class because that's what we do. They know that I am there, I'm aware of who you are, I see you. So that has always worked and I will always stand behind them. I'm, and this is why, now the four things I've covered. So now here's how it works, why it works. Guys, if you have a kid who just comes in who he does, he, he knows that you don't know where he sits, you don't know who he is, you don't know how he is, and you don't greet him at the door, you don't care enough to say hello to him at the door individually or whatever, then he's not gonna participate. He's not gonna do anything for you. He's gonna give you pushback when, when you ask him something. And sometimes it happens regardless, but these are things that we can eliminate by letting the kids know that I see you, what can I do to help? And um, guys, that's all the time I have for you right now. I need you to go out there and be great. As you go into this new school year, go out there and kill it. And I'll see you in the next video.